healthcare product distributor, Entero Healthcare's IPO will be opening for subscription on the 9th of February. It's a 1600 crore rupee IPO, which consists of a fresh issue of 1000 crore rupees and an offer for sale worth 600 crore rupees. The proceeds of this issue will be used for debt repayment. General corporate purposes, they will look at acquisitions too. To discuss the issue further, we're now joined by Prabhat Agarwal, promoter, MD and CEO at Entero Healthcare. Prabhat, thank you very much uh, for speaking to CNBC TV 18 and the show, IPO thank you so KYC. Much. So first, you're a healthcare distributor company. You procure your medicines um, from the manufacturer straight away and then you distribute it to hospitals, pharmacies, doctors. Right, that's, that's right. a simple business model. Yes. Size up the industry for us. It's a 2.7 lakh crore industry, yes. out of which 90 to 92 percent is controlled by local distributors. The pan India players have an 8 to 10 percent, um, you know, market share. Where do you stand, and who are your competitors? So there are only three large guys in the, in this extremely large market, right? Mm. Uh, you know, the, as you said, the market is 2.7 lakh crores, and that's growing in double digits year on year. So the market is expanding on a large base. And uh, you know that, and the market is extremely fragmented. You know, we have close to sixty-five thousand, you know, distributors operating in this market, right? And most of them are regional, local players. At a national level, only three players are there. You know, one we are there, and uh, Kimed, and uh, Pharmacy Group, right? So and Kimed is owned by the Apollo Group. Yes, uh, a part I think owned by the you know Apollo family, mm. right? So they are, they are, these are the only three large players at at uh, Pan India level, right? We were the last to enter this market, and uh, we have we have been the company that has been able to scale up much faster than the rest of the two, right? So. So your market share would be one and a half percent. Yeah, close to one and a half percent at a national level. At a national know, level. Uh, but at a local level, in, in various markets, we have you know ten percent plus market shares. So which would your key markets be? Where your strength lies? No, we are present in thirty-eight cities in this mm -hmm. country. You know, uh, you know, from Kerala to Uttar Pradesh. You know, uh, you know, uh, we have. You know, 77 warehouses spread across 38 cities from where we supply mm. in almost 500 districts of India. Mm. Uh, you know, India has close to, you know, 900,000 pharmacies and mm. our customer base is around 80, 85,000. So we are almost suppliers to one out of 10 pharmacies in the country, you know, and we have been able to reach that kind of penetration in a very short period Five of time. Yeah. You know, we are the fastest to scale up in this business. You know, we entered this market in 2018. And within five or six years, we have been the, w become one of the largest in the country. So, just to complete that point about market share, you're at one and a half percent. What about Farm Easy and Kimed? Their market share would be more or less. Yeah, I, Farm Easy would be more or less similar, you know, okay. and uh, Kimed is larger. But Kimed also has a lot of captive business where they supply to the Apollo stores. Correct. Got it. Okay. Now let me talk to your uh, financials then. Now the company has always been loss making, except H1 of FI24. Uh, looking at your RHP in FI21, it was a loss of 15 crore. FI22, a loss of 29 crores. FI23, a loss of 11 crore. It's only in the first half of this year that you've turned around and reported a profit of about 11.6 crore. So first, tell us the reason for the loss in the preceding years. Yes. So if you look at the financials for the last three, four years, we have been profitable from year two on operating profit basis. You know, okay. so our EBITDA has always been possible, uh, prof, uh, you know, positive from FY20 onwards, right? So last okay. three years, uh, in EBITDA terms, we were profitable. Mm. In the first six months of the year, we became profitable at PAT level also, mm. right? And if you look at year on year, our uh, EBITDA has been increasing. You know, mm. for example, in H1. Uh, this year we made in six months the same amount of EBITDA what we made in last 12 months of the year, in the last year, right? So profitability has been increasing gradually year on year. And we are a five or six year old company. We invested a lot in building the network, the customers, the supply relationships, the distribution infrastructure, the sales infrastructure, you know, and uh, in five, six years, we have been able to turn profitable at a PAT level. So this level. is the first time you've reported a profit, right? In H1 of FI24? At a PAT level. At a PAT level. Yes. And from here on, are you confident the company will be profitable? Yes, we will. You know, as the, our scale increases, you know, uh, profitability margins would uh, would improve. They will get benefited from the scale benefits, you know, our network benefits, you know, more customers, and we'll enjoy operating leverage advantages and things like that. You know, Prabhat, while you're quite confident that the company is going to be profitable going ahead, the thing is, in a distributor model, the margins are wafer thin. Gross margins are 8 9%. EBITDA margins for your company have been ranging from 1 going up to nearly 3%. 
So it's easy to tilt the company into a loss if anything, if your capex uh, increases, you're, you decide to scale up more in investments. So what gives you the confidence about being profitable uh, going ahead? And even on margins, do you think you can better the current margins of 9% gross and 3% at the EBITDA level? Yes, with growing scale, you know, this business is all about scale. You know, supply chain businesses around the world are about scale, right? So we are in a very early journey of scale building, right? So as the scale goes up, and that's the reason why we are raising money in, in IPO, to scale up the company much faster, right? And once with that scale, with use of our technology and all that, you know, margins are certainly going to expand, you know, and that's what our aspiration is to grow the margins. And we look at the business from a return on capital metric, uh, you know, and at, with, a, at, with a certain four, five, five percent plus margins, you know, uh, and six times capital turnover ratio, we can generate more than 30 percent uh, kind of a return on capital. Return on capital. Once the margin metrics and, uh, you know, uh, the capital turnover ratio improves from here. So you're confident about margins expanding from current levels and even the company is staying profitable going ahead? Yes, certainly. We are aspiring and we are trying to you know, improve our margins. And I'm very confident that with the scale and technology, the if margins If you had to improve. tell me two or three reasons why the company was loss-making until FY23, what would it be? Yeah, it's mainly because our investments you know, in building warehouses throughout the country, you know, in building the team, Right, uh, that was main of the reasons. So investments is one. Yes, yes. Is there any other reason why the company was loss yeah, making? Because I mean, investments will continue. Less utilization of capacity, less utilization of uh, manpower capacity, right? So once, you know, you reach a certain scale, you know, your operating leverages start kicking in, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you start making money, you know, their, their businesses, you know, some of our subsidiaries were loss making in the beginning. They have turned profitable in the last two years. As, as I told you, in first half of the year, we made so much of, I mean, same amount of EBITDA that we made in last 12 months of the year, right? So mm -hmm. it is very certain and very visible that, you know, the margins will expand with the scale. And talking about your investments going ahead, you have 77 warehouses right now. Are you looking to increase that number? and? Where is that money going to come from? Yeah, so we will be now, you know, expanding in more number of cities. Today we are present in 38 cities. We want to expand to more number of cities in this country. We want to make this company a true pan-India distribution network, right? Uh, you know, a, a company that can make the product available in wide part of this country, right? Mm. And uh, to achieve that objective, we will be entering new cities and, you know, creating new infrastructure over there. So even if you continue to invest in the company, you're still confident it will be profitable? It will be profitable, yeah. It is, I mean, in the first six months of the year, you have seen that the company has turned profitable. At a pack level, at an operating level, we have always been profitable. You also have a private label business, yes. CureEver. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about it. Uh, How much so does it contribute our, to Our private label more, more is in the devices side. You know, we, we sell our brand of nebulizers, therm digital thermometers, adult diapers, and, you know, surgical products, right? Uh, to, it, it contributes only 1% of our turnover right now. Mm. Uh, but as we gain scale, you know, this, this contribution should go up. But you also, under this CureEver brand, you also were selling generic medicines, which you're planning to gradually scale down. Why is that? Yeah, we want to focus on those kind of product categories where there's less conflict of interest with the pharmaceutical companies and focus where the where the products are mainly sold through channel. You know, for example, these kind of products that I talked about, you know, thermometers and adult diapers, the doctors are not giving prescriptions for that, right? These are all, all sold based on channel availability and, you know, channel push. Yeah. And our strength is channel, you know, yeah. because we are present in one out of 10 pharmacies. Let's say in India, we are present in three and a half thousand hospitals in this country. We are the largest hospital supplier, right? So, you know, we have a good customer base. We have good customer relationships. We have good distribution network in the country. All these products category that I talked about can ride on that. Mm. So just to get the numbers right, Cure Ever, you said, had revenues of 3.7 crore in H1. Is that it? And yeah. a loss of about three and a half crore? Yeah, that, that's a business that we talked about in the document that we are kind of scaling down, right? Okay, this is the... the this is not the medical devices This part. is not the medical, the medical devices. Medical devices are, are all under the name of enterosurgicals. Enterosurg. Okay, yeah. and that is about 1% uh, revenue yes, contribution. Yes, uh, approximately, yes. And is it profitable right now or is it loss making? No, it's proper. I, this, there's not much of cost attached to it, right? Because, mm. you know, we procure from good, uh, you know, good manufacturers having good facilities. Mm. And then we sell it to, you know, the retailers and the hospitals, right? Okay. So right now, in the last five years, Prabhat, you've scaled your business up to be a pan-India, a large uh, you know, healthcare distributor. And the idea is going ahead that you will be bigger, you will be better in the business that is your core strength. But are there adjacencies? So you spoke about um, you know, 
products, which are, you know, the nebulizers, healthcare, under enterosurgicals. How big do you want this business to be? Are there any other adjacencies that you're looking at? Yeah, there are, there are a lot of adjacencies, you know, on the product category wise. Like in India, you know, we are, we are one of the largest in the pharmaceutical side. We want to scale up, you know, we sell coronary stents, we sell, mm. you know, orthopedic under implants. Under your brand name? No, not no. under our brand name, third party. Third party. Right. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of product portfolio that we can expand. So you expand know, your product portfolio under yes. enterosurgicals? Not under private label, even, you know, somebody else's brand we are, you know, selling in. Uh, okay. uh, so not just medicines, but also products? Yes, products, but not non-private label. Non-private label. Yes. I mean, once we reach a hospital or once we reach a pharmacy, we would want to supply everything, everything. that a hospital or pharmacy needs. The, a hospital mm -hmm. doesn't only need pharmaceutical products, they also need, you know, uh, you know, medical devices, medical consumables and things like that. So there is a lot of scope available to expand in various product categories where our presence is relatively small today, mm. right? So to, if say five years down the line, if you have a chat five years later, yes. what do you think the contribution of uh, the non-medicine distribution business will be, which could be products, your own or third party? See, pharmaceutical business, even if you look at the industry, is the biggest part is the pharmaceutical, the medicines. So medicines. medicines would remain the biggest part of our business. Do you business. think you can scale it up to, say, 5% of your revenues? Yeah, I mean, yes. It's possible. Yes, it's possible. Okay. You also have something called Health Edge. Yes. Which is a software solution yes. which is selling to pharmacies. Yes. Tell us so this is, a, this is, a, you know, a, a model which we are excited about. We are yet to launch in a full scale basis. We are doing a bit of a pilot on that. Basically under this we provide, you know, our, after our software solutions to the pharmacies through which they can connect to our network, right? And they get all the benefits that a large pharmacy would entail, right? Because we kind of aggregate the buying power for, you know, small little mm -hmm. pharmacies and then, you know, we try to get them a better you know, sales uh, opportunity or a profit opportunity. Would you ever look at getting into, you know, pharmaceutical retailing, uh, opening we, up your own shops we, under your as brand? As of now, we don't have any such plans. Why is that? Because we feel that Health Edge can help you scale more than opening up your own pharmacy because there are all, already enough number of pharmacies in the country. More than 9 lakh pharmacies are there, right? So mm. we want to enable them to do better rather than competing with them or rather than opening a new pharmacy next to them. Let me talk about how you're going to use the money that you're raising. 1,000 crore rupees, out of which I think about 140 to 43 crore will go towards reducing your debt. Yes. Your debt is 40, 490 crore. Yes. So even after you bring down your debt, you're still not going to be a debt-free company. Yes. See, this business is all driven by working capital. Working right? capital. Yeah, and working capital, you enjoy good working capital facilities from the banks, right? You, you, you would always use a mix of equity and debt to grow our business. Mm. You know, because equity is more expensive than debt, right? So, you know, and working capital is all backed by inventory and receivables and all that. So we will have a mix of, you know, debt and equity to grow the business. So at no point you intend to be debt free? We could be, but as of now, you know, uh, as of now, we No, I just wanted to, to understand the thought process that why you didn't look to raise money to pare down your entire debt. We are, we are actually look, raising money to grow our business, mm. right? Because the... With growth of the business, with scale of the business, a lot of benefits accrue to the business, you know, in terms of profitability, margin expansion, you know, things like that. Other adjacencies that we are targeting, right? So part of the, part of the fund is we are using to retire debt, but large part of it we are using to grow the business. Yes, the working capital, which is yes. about 480 crore rupees, right. which suffices your requirement for FI25 and FI26. Yes, and then, you know, business uh, is profitable, so, you know, it will generate internal accruals also for growth. So we have taken a mix of internal accrual, equity raise, and working capital to grow the business. And the cash in the books is? Today we have around 100 crores uh, in cash. But you also have kept aside some money to make some acquisitions. Yes. And you're a company which has grown by acquisitions. You made 34 acquisitions since you started, and your journey has been less than, you know, five years. Yes. So uh, tell us about your acquisition plans. Yeah, so we, we are continuously looking for, you know, strategic acquisition opportunities. And the reason why we are quite, because we want to increase our penetration in a uh, large part of India. You imagine India is a very large country, right? And having one distributor giving entire coverage for the entire country hasn't happened ever in India before, right? So, and mm -hmm. that's what we are aspiring and targeting to. So there are a lot of markets where we, you know, go organically also. 
but there are certain markets where we use inorganic uh, route to make our presence felt right so we have a team which continuously looks for opportunities but more than the uh, more than the acquisition all these acquisitions that we have done the 34 that mm. we did in the past have grown so well you know and some of the information is there in the our document you know you know we have been able to scale up those acquisitions three four five times of when we took over right and this is because uh, you know being part of entero gives them a good right to win in their local market because we expand their product portfolio we expand their range you know we expand the customer service we deploy our technology to make them more efficient right so that's how you know those businesses that we have acquired have go grown much faster than their competitors or uh, compared to the industry you said you've also grown faster than your two other competitors right we were the last to enter this market in 2018 so say in the last 3 years what is your growth rate versus peer growth rate or industry growth rate industry has been growing like 10% right we have grown 36% in last 3 years our cagr Mm. More than three and a half times of industry growth rate. And what are the margins of the industry? Are you operating at similar margins, or uh, are your margins higher or lower? No, I mean, lot of uh, none of these companies are pub, you know, public, public, right? So that information on profitability is not so easily accessible uh, mm. for us. Okay. Talking about trade receivables, your trade receivables have also gone up, and I think it stands at six hundred and thirty crore. Mm. Is that a bit of a concern? And are you looking to bring it down because it's been steadily going up? Yeah, but business trade receivable is directly proportional to the to the sales growth, right? So this business is you know fueled by working capital, right? More you sell, you will uh, have more receivable, more inventory, right? Mm. So it has grown in line with the sales growth. You know, as we said, you know, we have uh, one of our unique features is that we have been growing tremendously in last five years. You know, we started with zero revenues in five years back, and we are you know in the first half of this year, you know, we have close to nineteen hundred crores in revenues, right? Annualized basis close to four thousand crores, right? So uh, the growth rate has been tremendous and we expect you know that with the new capital that we are going to raise in this ipo we will even be more aggressive on growth so it is possible that your growth rate will be faster than what we've seen so far given the growth capital that you've raised possible for sure it's possible and this offer for sale of 600 crores um, can you tell us who is selling a uh, large part of that offer is of sale is coming from orbimed which is a private equity fund focused 100% on healthcare and they were the early believers in this company you know mm. so part of their holding only 20% of their holding they are selling in OFS okay and other promoters selling yeah two individual promoters myself and prem we are selling a very small portion of our holding so what would the promoter holding come down to uh, you know promoter holding uh, even though orbimed is classified as a promoter you know because of their large share holding in the company mm. even after post issue you know the promoter holding all three of us will be more than 50% you got it also now final word on the valuations prabhat uh, i know the history of the company is limited you all were making losses but if i just annualize your first half of the year eps at 2.95 rupees uh, and if i come to assume even 6 rupees you know some growth on 6 rupees assuming some growth on that you're being offered at more than 200 times trailing multiple or fi24 pe that's excessive right or that's on the higher side See, the valuation is determined more about the future potential of the company rather than the history, right? So, you know, in a 2.7 lakh crore market, there are only three large guys operating at a pan-India level. This is a massive opportunity. We have been growing 36% CAGR for last three years, right? And so you will the, be profitable going ahead. And profitable going ahead. We already turned margins. profitable in the first six months of this year, right? So, and it's going to expand only, right? So, you know, we have done extensive road shows with a lot of very high quality institutional investors and the price has been fixed based on input and feedback mm. from from these uh, multiple meetings that we had with the investor. We are very confident about the future, you know, mm. the future growth potential, you know, in a large market like India, you know, with a limited, you know, competition at a national level, you know, uh, and extremely clear right But undercutting win. is common in your business, you know, yes. to get the pricing right See, our value proposition under our value proposition to our customers are basically the range service right we we give them a massive range to work with we give them a very high fulfillment rates right and that is what the customers are looking for we are not playing on pricing with our with our customers okay. thank you very much uh, prabhat for joining in that's uh, entero healthcare the healthcare distributor companies thank you very much for watching the show